Hi, my name is Mark Drake. I'm a consultant in healthcare of the elderly or geriatrics uh, and general medicine at the University Hospital Plymouth NHS Trust. Um, I've been a consultant for the last three years, um, having done my training uh, entirely uh, undergraduate and postgraduate uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, in terms of why did I do healthcare of the elderly, it's because it's the best job in the world. Um, without a doubt, I would recommend it to absolutely everybody. The role involves caring for people as we grow older and all of the multiple uh, medical problems that may be associated with that. Not just looking after medical problems as well, but looking after uh, psychological, potentially psychiatric aspects, um, social concerns. So it really is a very holistic uh, discipline within medicine. It's a real privilege to look after um, older people, people who have lived for many years, um, speaking with them, caring for them, uh, hearing their experiences of life. It, it is genuinely an honor. Um, it encompasses a great many areas. Uh, so you have general health care of the elderly, so the general problems that come with ageing. You have concerns around frailty, which is uh, an increasing concern uh, globally and a very interesting area of research. Um, you have stroke medicine, movement disorders, including things like Parkinson's disease, uh, other areas which um, perhaps may not be considered uh, quite so um, uh, exciting but actually are incredibly important to individuals so things like continence um, where actually making a difference to someone on a day-to-day -day basis has a massive impact on their quality of life uh, further falls which is so multifactorial including cardiac syncope seizures balance problems Outside of the medicine, we get to work with a wonderful team. So you have the multidisciplinary team, um, which is a really important word in healthcare of the elderly for anyone who's interested. So not just the medical staff, um, for inpatients, you have the nursing staff, the care staff who are with the patients and will be observing them and have a, be able to give you important updates on how they're doing. You have the physiotherapy colleagues, whilst we learn much about gait and balance and mobility, um, they are experts in this field and so we work very closely with them. Uh, same with occupational therapists who are experts in actually how not just is the person moving, but actually how are they able to put in together the, the medical problems, the, the mobility problems and actually how can that individual function. Uh, so it's a, it's a broad group of people that we work with uh, and it's a real privilege to do so. Uh, it also uh, is a very enjoyable uh, specialty uh, because of the nature of the people who are often older uh, and may have multiple comorbidities, um, it is diagnostically very interesting and very challenging. It's not a specialty which is very protocol driven. Uh, there is evidence and actually if you are interested in research, there are lots of potential research avenues. Um, but also it means that when someone comes in, they often, you are balancing their acute coronary syndrome with a, a GI bleed. And so it's not just about following one particular pathway. And that in itself also provides um, an interesting um, part on a day-to-day -day basis. Outside of the ward, uh, you have your outpatient clinics, which touch on just some of the areas I've mentioned already, which again is a massive um, area of uh, interest, constant medical education, and again liaising with other departments. So whilst we are, we are general um, and we like to keep abreast of what is happening, um, it is not an area where we know everything about everything, and so we do refer to and depend on our specialist colleagues elsewhere. There is also the excitement of um, the acute older person, uh, so this is an area of increasing um, uh, interest and recognition of the importance and also the pre-frail, so actually making a difference to people before they become frail and what we can do to try and modify that. These are all areas of research and interest uh, and where we can make a significant difference to people and their quality of life. Um, Finally, also one of the big areas of people with cognitive impairment, uh, people who have conditions such as dementia, um, and this is, again, uh, fascinating. You'll be aware of a lot of research going into this area, but also the practical difficulties of supporting people through this condition, looking after them when they become medically unwell. Further, as a natural course to life, as we grow older at some point, 
our lives must end and actually being a part of that, helping someone die well is incredibly important um, and for the individual themselves and actually for their family members as well being part of that process and having the memories of someone who is passing away peacefully is a wonderful privilege. So there are a great many areas that attracted me to healthcare of the elderly and certainly a great many areas why I would recommend it to absolutely everyone. It is definitely the best job in the world. So healthcare of the elderly, uh, I got into through traditional training mechanisms. Um, I'm old enough to predate the foundation year one and foundation year two, which is what happens now. So that's very general, broad training. After that, applications are then made uh, to what is now internal medical training, IMT. Um, I did the old fashioned CMT, uh, where healthcare of the elderly, geriatrics is now actually a mandatory part of the training. So whatever specialty you want to do in the future this is actually really important to know about because we are facing an aging population um, also it's the best job in the world um, with regards to that uh, you spend four months within your IMT training period within a healthcare of the elderly department uh, that will usually be a ward based environment uh, but there are mandatory periods where you have clinic exposure uh, where hopefully you'll get a flavour of uh, some of the outpatient work uh, which can be quite considerable uh, touching on all of the areas that healthcare of the elderly uh, reaches to so again such as frailty, continence movement disorders, TIA, stroke clinics, falls clinics. Um, then once you've completed your IMT training, you then competitively apply for your uh, speciality trainee post, so the registrar post. Um, at this point, uh, the key is having demonstrated some interest in your specialty. Uh, so that is not just your four month placement, um, but perhaps having undertaken an audit that demonstrates interest. Uh, if you can, perhaps presentations locally. Um, there is the British Geriatrics Society, which is a um, welcoming, uh, intelligent national group uh, where if you can submit poster applications, they will have opportunities twice a year to have their national conferences. Uh, and these are areas that you can demonstrate interest uh, in your uh, future career in healthcare of the elderly. Uh, once you are interviewed, and that will uh, include clinical scenarios, uh, it will include um, uh, potentially an ethical scenario as well because that's something that's very important and something that we all deal with actually whatever uh, career path you choose but is often a significant part of elder care medicine. Um, your portfolio will be looked at, so keeping on top of that um, can be challenging in terms of finding the enthusiasm after a long hard day at work but it is really important because it's one of the areas that you demonstrate your competencies and your commitment to your future specialty uh, and then once moving on to that once you've been accepted into training uh, it is traditionally a five-year training scheme where you will be exposed to general ward work you will have sub-specialty training again in the areas that I've previously mentioned um, so that you will be able to manage uh, the complexities of the older person. You can then potentially, if you are interested, do a further year uh, to make it six years in stroke medicine, uh, which will uh, allow you the opportunity to then dual a credit um, or potentially triple a credit because once you've completed your five-year training, you come out um, able to be a, an acute uh, general medical consultant, so partake in the general medical take. Uh, you then also have your healthcare of the elderly specialty and then potentially if you've done that sixth year you can then do stroke medicine as well. Uh, there is the opportunity to do research within this, so out of hours, train, out of programme training um, or if you have another interest potentially making a special application to spend a year doing something else if you wanted further experience for example in movement disorders or the like. Um, again you also do your acute medical training, so you will often be part of the acute medical rotor, the acute medical registrar on call, um, which often puts many people off about thinking um, about general medical specialties. I wouldn't let that put you off. It is a fantastic opportunity. By the time you get there, you will be trained enough to undertake the skills. Um, you will be experienced enough, um, and actually it can be a really enjoyable uh, part of the job. So that's the training path to, to healthcare of the elderly.
if you are a new trainee turning up to a healthcare of the elderly ward, part of the role of being an IMT is that you will be taught, that you will have education. So don't panic too much about turning up as a fount of knowledge in geriatrics. That is part of our role as the consultants and as part of your supervisors to help teach you that. I think one of the biggest keys is turning up prepared to learn, turning up with a really willing and enthusiastic attitude and being prepared to genuinely work as part of a team. So respecting your colleagues, um, not just your doctor colleagues, um, but everyone across um, the, the ward environment because they're all going to be really crucial in providing the best outcome for your patients. If you want to have areas that uh, show your interest before you arrive at the ward, having some idea of cognitive impairment because a lot of patients who end up coming and being directed to healthcare of the elderly ward often have cognitive impairment. So being aware of that, dementia types, touching on things like polypharmacy because one of the big things that we do in the specialty actually is try and rationalise medication um, because often again if people have seen lots of different specialties you might end up having potentially medication that conflict and so being aware of polypharmacy uh, looking at the role that drugs may play in things like falls or cognitive impairment and having that awareness would demonstrate commitment before arriving on the ward um, but don't forget that you are also here to learn and we are here to help support and teach you in that. So don't panic too much. I enjoy a great deal of my job. I hope that that has come across so far um, in everything that you've heard from me. The areas, if I was going to try and pick most, I guess, um, are the diagnostic challenges. So trying to work out um, exactly what it is or more often than not actually what the multiple causes of the acute presentation of an individual are. Uh, the interactions with the patients themselves and also their relatives who are often in many ways at the reverse end of a paediatric sort of they are now providing the care for their older parent and perhaps if there's cognitive impairment their parents uh, are not able to let them know what's going on so having that interaction explaining uh, the diagnoses the impact that this is going to have on the future um, is potentially a very rewarding part of the job and also very challenging um, and potentially quite emotional as well and it's important to, to, to remember that but because of this because of the difference that you can make to the person and to the to the family because of the uh, cognitive challenges in terms of the thinking that's needed to be done it is such a rewarding privileged role that it is very rare I think for myself or any of my colleagues or anyone actually I know who work in this discipline to go home without feeling like they've done a really rewarding uh, enjoyable yes at times challenging and yes at times emotionally draining but but day in the hospital um, day to day week to week working with colleagues is also a massive reward it's an important part of when you think about your future job, your future colleagues, and I can honestly say my geriatric colleagues, without exception, wherever I have worked um, in the country, have all been uh, incredibly intelligent, incredibly lovely, supportive people. Uh, and that is also a real joy of the job. Whilst I have been honest and very positive about healthcare of the elderly geriatrics, uh, no one would believe me if I said it was perfect and without flaw. And there are definitely challenges. Many of them we've touched on. Many of the positives can also be challenges. The, the going home, uncertain as to what is going on, working out, trying to take the next step, caring for people who are profoundly unwell, who potentially in their 90s with heart failure, heart attacks, MIs, strokes, sepsis, all of these conditions that you are managing with their children who have been there for their entire lives, the emotional attachment, the emotional drain that you see as part of that is a, is a real challenge. Um, also, it is an expanding specialty, so it is an area where the recognition of need is high and the numbers of geriatricians to meet that need is currently shorter. And so the workload 
is not overwhelming, but it does mean that often you may be working in a department where you see need elsewhere, you can see where as a geriatrician you could be doing more for the people in the hospital and the people before they even come into hospital in the local area, but you don't yet have the resources or capability to meet that. So there are definite challenges. Uh, there is also a practical challenge, something that I think as medics we would all enjoy, but there is the challenge of keeping up to date um, and keeping up to date with so many different areas. Uh, it is rewarding and that is an enjoyable challenge most certainly, but something to be aware of. Um, it is not a specialty where you can arrive and then, and I don't think this is true of anything, but where you can then coast. You do have to keep abreast of everything that is happening in so many different areas. Um, Again, enjoyable, but a definite challenge. For someone new to the United Kingdom, one of the biggest things that I would absolutely recommend, and for people that I've worked with, I think that makes the biggest difference, is not going straight into a training job. I think spending some time getting used to the systems, um, having some exposure to how the national health system works, um, the computer systems, actually many of the very basic mundane day-to-day -day things that make your life and job as a doctor much easier are really important. Um, the human body is the same the world over. Uh, culture may be different but the medicine that we deal with is is the same but actually getting used to the system um, is incredibly important and the other thing that would be worth mentioning is the aspect of having an open mind because equally coming to the UK knowing your medicine being a highly intelligent individual before you come here um, accounts for a huge amount but actually also being open-minded about the culture the system and also potentially and it's very difficult to generalize because the world is a big place and medicine is whilst the same the world over perhaps practiced in different ways um, also the communication aspect it's something that i would labor as a geriatrician because it's such a significant part of our job um, is communicating with the patient and also with the relative so often you're communicating things twice having to sit down and explain the diagnosis, the rationale for treatment, or potentially the rationale for not being able to treat something. Um, and this is a really crucial part um, in terms of empowering the patient and the family to be aware of what is going on um, and to accept the diagnosis and hopefully actually help them move forward with, with their treatment. In an unbiased fashion, what I would also genuinely recommend is Road to the UK, because the trainees I've worked with uh, who are part of that have demonstrated its worth uh, so I would heartily endorse actually this website without a doubt. One other really important point I would say coming is enjoy it, enjoy the UK, enjoy working with some fantastic people um, and enjoy working in the NHS. I'm clearly very biased but the ability to treat absolutely everybody who comes through the door without having to worry about cost, insurance, all of those things is a massive privilege and actually really enables me to feel like I'm practicing holistic medicine and just doing the best I can for the individual in front of me and I think that is a real privilege so enjoy it.